Hi, this is Mr. Shumway. This video explains a group of questions that you might see on the ACT. This is the second group. So if a right triangle has one side of seven and another side of eight, what is the length of the hypotenuse? Right triangle. So that angle there is 90 degrees. The hypotenuse is the one we're trying to find. Maybe this one's seven, this one's eight. So what's that one? We don't know. Well, you might remember that for a right triangle, the length of one side squared plus the length of another side squared equals the length of the hypotenuse squared. So in this case, we'll say eight squared plus seven squared equals x squared. And so we have 64 plus 49 equals x squared. So 113 equals x squared. In a calculator, the square root of x is 113 equals 10.6. So if I take the square root of x squared, that gives me x. The square root of 113, that gives me 10.6. Well, that makes sense that this side, this length, the length of the side of that triangle, is greater than the length of the other two, either one of the other two. If x equals 3 and y equals 2, by how much does 5x squared minus 2y exceed 2x squared minus 4y. Two ways to do that. Let me show you one. Well, let's show you both. So 5x squared minus 2y, let's subtract. So we want to see how much bigger that is than 3, no, 2x squared. So we're going to subtract that whole quantity. So 5x squared minus 2x squared is 3x squared. Subtracting a negative, so I'm subtracting a negative 4y. That's the same as adding 4y. So negative 2y my plus 4y is 2y. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding. So, 5x squared minus 2y is 3x squared plus 2y larger than the other one. So, I could to find out how much larger it is. This is, I just have to plug in the values of um, x is 3 and y is 2. So 3 squared is 9, 3 times 9 is 27, 27 plus 4 is 31. So 5x squared minus 2y exceeds 2x squared minus 4y by 31, if x is 3 and y is 2. Well, here's another way. If um, it's maybe a slower way but maybe the way that you see it, everybody sees these things different. So let's evaluate 5x squared when x is 3, and 2y when y is 2. So 3 squared is 9, 5 times 9 minus 2 times 2, which is 4, 5 times 9 is 45, minus 4 is 41. So let's evaluate 2x squared. when x is 3 and y is 2. So 2 times 9 minus 8. 2 times 9 is 18, minus 8 is 10. So they say, well, how much larger is 41 than 10? 
Well, the difference is 31. Either way, the average student consumes 50 pounds of sugar a year, and the wrestling team commits to cut back by 18%. What is the maximum amount of sugar a wrestler should consume? So if we multiply 50 times 0 0.18, that will tell us how much sugar he he needs to cut back by. Eight times zero, eight times five is forty. One times a move over one, one times zero, one times five. So we have nine zero zero. And how many decimal places do we have? Two. So I need to cut back by nine pounds. Well, if my average was 50 before, and I cut back by 9 pounds, my new average will be 41 pounds. So when they talk about the maximum, if you cut back by 18%, the maximum is 41 pounds. The square root of the inverse of 7 squared. So let's do these... The squared first, 7 squared is 49. Then we have the square root of negative 49. Well, there is no number that is the square root of negative 49. Because if negative 7 times negative 7 would be 49. And 7 times 7 is 49, so... I don't know of a number, but I can multiply and get negative 49. So they have invent. Let's go ahead and break this up into two parts. That is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 49. And that is equal to the square root of negative 1 times 7. Or 7 times the square root of negative 1. And... <clears throat> There has been a number defined called pi that is the square root of negative 1. So, it's an the i stands for imaginary because it's not a real number. It's an imaginary number. So they say that the square root of negative 49 would be, be 7i. So that's just a definition. I, I don't know if you need to um, prove that to yourself, but, but they've just defined the square root of negative 1 as i. Okay, here's a parallelogram. If um, angle D is 110, that angle is 110 degrees, and the angle A is 70, What angle would angle C need to be for this shape to be a parallelogram? Oh, I'm sorry, I labeled that angle A wrong. Angle A was that one. 70 degrees. So and then they say, what would angle C need to be? Well, angle C would ha need to have that same angle, and it would have to be 70 if these lines, I should change color, if these sides are going to be parallel and these sides are going to be parallel, then the angles opposite each other would have to be the same angles. Or the angles opposite each other would have to have the same value. 